The standards for mathematical practice are a key component of the Common Core. They span all grade levels and content areas. Just as there's a practice of medicine or teaching, there's a practice of mathematics. When I was in high school, I thought that mathematics was a body of knowledge, algebra was about equations, geometry was about space, arithmetic was about numbers. Every branch of mathematics was about some particular mathematical object. Mathematics is an established body of results and methods, but it's more than that. Later, I began to realize that it's also a way of thinking, and the standards for mathematical practice aim to infuse that into the classroom. The results and methods have grown over the centuries, and some of their purposes have changed. It's the thinking and style of work that can be applied in new situations and gives even the old tools new life. In a sense, the results and methods of mathematics are its artifacts. The real mathematics lies in the habits of mind, the mathematical practices that create those results and methods. For all students, whether they eventually build houses, run businesses, use spreadsheets, diagnose cars or computers or people, do research or prove theorems, the real utility of mathematics is not that it helps you make change or figure out the slope of a ramp. Its real utility is that it gives you intellectual ideas and inclinations that help you make sense of a rapidly changing world that requires new and flexible thinking. The mathematical habits of mind that serve us all include the disposition to puzzle through things, the drive for sense-making, the stamina and inclination to stick with, persevere with a problem, and thinking quantitatively, being able to present a train of thought or a sequence of steps to unfold a logical argument, seeking precision and clarity in both communication and thought, considering when to shift attention away from detail to focus on structure, and trying to abstract process or regularity from a set of examples. These habits serve most kinds of work and also most kinds of learning, including pure play. Of course, focusing on the thinking doesn't mean we should ignore the mathematical results and methods. Many of those results, like the Pythagorean theorem or the method of completing the square, are broadly useful. If students never encounter this background knowledge, their options are narrowed. These artifacts are essential to pursuing many interests, but they are also ideal vehicles for developing mathematical thinking precisely because they were built from that thinking. All students, not just those interested in technical pursuits, benefit from that thinking, and our students will gain a much more useful set of skills if we elevate the thinking behind the results to the same level of importance as the results themselves. The standards for mathematical practice also help us as educators. They give us a common language for talking about students' mathematical thinking, and they can help us organize classrooms around that thinking. The habits of mind that we want students to acquire don't reside in the problems we give. Even clever problems, they reside in the approaches students take to thinking about the mathematics. Learning these approaches takes time. That's why the standards for mathematical practice span all grade levels and content areas. To make the best use of these standards, teachers also need time. Time to work together, time to examine examples of student thinking, time to discuss what the standards look like in action, and time to plan for work in their classrooms.